time now for the men's team foil final here at the 2023 fencing world championships and out come japan matsuyama kiyosuke suzumura kenta iimura kazuki and shikine takahiro in the lineup it's suzumura who's going to warm the bench in this final match Japan take on their Asian counterparts, China. The lineup for them Wu Bin, Mo Ziwi, Zhu Ji, Chen Haiwei. Robbie Wu on the bench. The refereeing duties being conducted by Muhammad Ayub Fujani from Tunisia and Su Sang Wan of Korea, supported by Kathleen Varga of Hungary and Chua Eugene from Singapore. This is a massive day in the world of men's foil. There is Catalina Varga walking across as the teams do a fairly conservative huddle at the beginning. But a massive day in men's team foil. Italy lost out to Hong Kong in the quarterfinals. The team favored for the win here. Went out in the quarter-final stage. They finished fifth in the end, so picked up a bag of points. Uh, the most points they could with going out in the quarter-finals. Hong Kong went on to beat the USA, the number two team, in the bronze medal match. So I believe this is the first ever time in men's team foil, perhaps in more weapons, apart from maybe Epe, where we've had an all Asian World Championship team podium. Hong Kong in third, and we're about to find out who is going to take gold and silver. Will it be Japan or China? First up, it's Shikine Takahiro taking on Mo Ziwei. And you can ignore the world rankings here. These two teams have come here for gold. Two attempts to take the blade from Shikine. Mosey Wee just went straight to the target. Our oh, patience there from Mo. Just waiting for the counter attack to come. And then he finished his attack. That's a cautious approach from Shikine. It's not panning out for him at the moment. It's 
to the line being given there for Mosey Way. And our first video appeal. A nod from Sue, who is on uh, the video duties for these first two matches. He'll be out on the floor to replace Fajani for legs three and four. And they'll flip-flop between the two of them every couple of matches. It stands, so Shikine has burnt his appeal. And a beat of the blade from Mo sees China get through leg number one of nine without being hit. You need to foil. It's a point weapon. You've got to hit with the tip of the sword. Target area is that silver jacket, just the torso. And the referee's job here is to decide who the attacking fencer is. If you're being attacked, the two things that you can do are defend by using distance, run away from your opponent, or with your blade. That's called a parry. If you do either of those two things, it's your turn to attack. So up now, Iimura and Chen. And it looked like the Chinese were already considering the substitution. Mosey Wei done his job right at the beginning. Uh, an interesting call from them. I think it would be Japan doing that. Well, a yellow card coming out for Iimura. Imura is putting Japan back in the game here. <laughs> Top 32 finishes in the individual tournament for uh, these two teams. The best results. Video. Okay. Shang Lei looks on. 
London 2012 Olympic gold medalist. The coaching party for China. But those in the know, as we have a video review of that last tip, those in the know will know that uh, China for sure were targeting this team event because of the value of points available. In the qualifying stakes for the Olympics in Paris. Double points available at this competition compared to the zonal championships and the World Cups. A good result here makes a big difference, and it has already made a difference in terms of Olympic qualification. As a ducking counter attack comes up in from Iemura. Came into the competition with USA, Italy, Japan, and France occupying the top four spots for automatic qualification. The zonal spots were with Egypt, Korea, Canada, and Germany. Despite Italy's fallout in the quarterfinals, uh, along with France, Italy have remained in the top four but have dropped to third place. Whatever the outcome of this match, these two, uh, what, sorry, uh, Japan and the USA stay ahead of them. If China win, China will leap from Italy as well. They'll stay in the top four. It does mean France move down into the European place, which is bad news for Germany. Hong Kong, with their bronze medal finish, skip above Korea, and they claim at the moment they stand in the Asian spot. Egypt and Canada still safely holding their zonal spots. Fantastic run from Iimura Kazuki here. So the power post being given to Chen Haiwei. And we're all square, but whatever happens with this last hit in this second leg, Iemura has done a great job getting Japan back into the match. Is a card going to be shown here? It is indeed. Yellow card going out to Chen Haiwei. And it's another card for Iimura for turning his back. And that means the fight is over because a red card is a result of two yellows and a 10-9 lead now for China. But a 5-9 in favor of Iimura. Well, saying that, uh, on review, the referee has uh, rescinded the red card. And we're back at 9-9. Must have called Holt first. It, uh, it does go 10-9 in uh, China's favor. I mean, the attack on the back. Right across his name tag. So up now, it's uh, Matsuyama Kiyosuke for Japan, world number 14, up against Zhu Ji, 21-year-old for China. Nice 
power pass. Glimpse of the uh, Chinese coach. Shot there of Owen oh, well, the Frenchman, who is part of the coaching staff in Japan, along with the head of coach Frank Bodam. So Zhu there went looking for the blade, didn't get it, and on, on level terms. So a post good for Jude. Picking up a double circular cease. Oh, the attack failed. Just missed there, it was blocked out, and then uh, Repost, once Japan attacked, went on target. Now, did Matsuyama step over the back line? That's what the referee was looking on at. Guard. No point, on guard. And no point given. Matsuyama must have hit Little off little. target there. On guard. Red, are you? Ah, it's On guard. Red, are you? Ah, 
Well, the first attack misses from Matsuyama. Nothing came from Zhu. So Matsuyama hits with the remise. Target score of 15 approaching. 50 seconds left on the clock. There's time here for both Zhu and Matsuyama to get more points. Well, stepping over the side Onga. of the piece there, Zhuji. So he concedes Onga. a meter of ground. Onga. So Matsuyama Kisuki just getting tricked into the counter attack there. So then we're going to be brave here in the last few seconds. Counter action is good for Matsuyama Kiyosuke and Japan wrestle the lead off China. 15 to 40 for Japan. So a third of the way through the match and these uh, teams have definitely been feeling each other out. And it's Iemura and Wu up for the next match. Leg number four, the second of three matches for both these fences. I'll say that. The first for Wu, as he is the Chinese substitute. So Mo, having gone 5 0 up in the first leg, has actually been substituted out of the match. Well, this is uh, pretty unusual stuff from Wu Bin. So a video review called here, and we get to see what the uh, referees see. Slowed it right down to 20%. We're really inspecting the detail here of uh, this particular hit. So no call given on a Susan one. Just kept the right of way there. Yeah, Mura.
We get another video appeal here from Iamura. That hit was uh, given to Wu. And, uh, replay shows us why it went in that direction. Iamura just stopped on his attack. This time it's Wu who keeps the attack. It's got an interesting style, Wu Bin. Not one that I've really seen in men's foil for a long time. He teases his opponents with his body movements. Frank Badan there on the right, uh, the lead coach for Japanese foil, the Frenchman. Sitting in the crowd. Someone Lepeshu in the box. Nipping in with a very quick attack there, Iamura. The attack there from Wu. Lethal, but not quite on target. The way the modern foil is going, I think Wu is going to get this one. He's threatening the target for sure. He's teased out the uh, the counter attack there. We'll find out here. And it doesn't. Doesn't give it that way to Sang Won, the Korean said that uh, you pulled your arm back way too far, so I'm giving attack on preparation. And the attack going through, so Japan to maintain the lead. And extend it by a single point. So Shikine Takahiro, the world number 24, goes up against the world number 33, Juji.
Falsa, tac, non valable. On garde. Prêt. Allez. So Zhu pressing here. He's just trying to woo the counter attack, and that's exactly what happened. So now it's up to Fajani to decide. And he's given this on attack or preparation again. So China need to be a little bit careful of this approach. Well, that's part of their game plan here. Counter attack from Zhu. Shikino Takahiro landing off target. So Shikine getting a little bit too close and failing with the attack. Blocked out. Oh, Repost is on target. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely fantastic timing. When you look at the way the Chinese athletes are fencing here, they're actually keeping it very simple. Hits are all pretty much direct. They're doing all the work on their feet. That is the trick. It may seem alien to some, but most of the work the fencers do is on the feet, not in the hand. to the back line here oh but no harm there off target attack given to the right and uh, uh, an appeal from Shikine Takahiro is that acceptable he says to the referee this one China are the only Asian team to ever have won the men's team foil competition at the world championships in 2010-2011 they did it and the stakes are high here at these world championships because of that Olympic qualification situation China and Japan both in the top four whatever happens here whoever wins China perhaps needing the points a little bit more than Japan. And it's conceivable at this point that uh, we could end up with two Asian teams, a Pan-American team, the USA, and one European team at the moment, Italy, in the top four qualifying teams. Meaning three Asian teams are likely to be competing at Paris 2024. <laughs> After a, a great little battle there from Zhu. 
Kine gets to the target score of 25 points. 5-5 five, five in the match itself. So Chinese closing the gap bit by bit. And Matsuyama back on, and he goes up against Chen Hui. Chasing down 30 points now, and Matsuyama out of the blocks fast. They're all big chaps, the Chinese. It's all about footwork for them. But there we see that even in close quarters, they're a danger. looking on here, trying okay. to keep his composure. Yes. Look at your bottom dollar. He will be nervous. Part of the French team that won the uh, gold medal in the men's team foil at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. He's a silver medalist in Rio with the uh, team and a four-time team world champion, Erwin Lepeshu. What a bad guy to have in the box. Japan going for their first ever men's team world title here. Attack, stop, attack, push, Rolling on to that target score of 30 Three. points. Six leg of nine here. China will not want to be too far away from Japan going into the final third of the match. And that's why Chen Haiwei and coach Keen to keep the momentum and the uh, intensity of the match as high as possible. Well, the beat came from Chen Hai Wei. He had the right of way, but didn't land the hit. Blocking counter attack or a counter block from Matsuyama Kiyosuke. Beautiful little attack block there from Matsuyama. Just got a glimpse of uh, Yuki Ota in the crowd. Japanese foilist of some note. Iimura trying to emulate him here. As he goes up against Juji. Oh, 
Sure, we'll get a look at Yuki Otter again, but uh, he got the silver medal at the Summer Olympics of 2008 in Beijing. Probably the most famous Japanese fencer, certainly at that time. Good look at this one. Onga. Changje. Give me a score. Attack two, one. Onga. Onga. Ready? Attack two, one. Again, it's all very direct from uh, the Chinese fences. Doing it with a change of pace in their footwork. Really impressive to see. Again, it's all about the feet here. Sneaking into distance. Tiny steps. Into the back line now. Uh, counter attack there. No need for bombastic footwork from Zhu on that occasion. Ultra fast reactions, though. Saw the attack coming and just hit the counter and turned his body away. Attack right for me. That's what uh, the referee has given. So you look at the attacks, and you, when you're looking at foil fencing, you need to be thinking like a, an apex predator. Nice counter-attack there from Iimura. And what I mean by that, a, a big cat will go after its prey, but does it by sneaking up on them. It's only the last part of that attack that's fast, and that's exactly the same as foil. You need to get into the distance without your opponent realizing, and then pounce. He's given the line there to uh, Iimura. The line is where an athlete extends their arm fully straight. They must point the weapon at the target. And as long as the blade isn't touched, they can even go backwards and keep the right of way. So into this final third, and Japan just starting to creep away. Pin to the line, Iemura, and. Well, that time, zhu has gone off the side of the piste and uh, will have to concede a metre of ground. But he's way inside of the Japanese half of the piste. 
when that happens. Red, are you? Well, Iimura, the lion of that particular match, finding the moment to land the attack. She put in a nice little counter attack. Just like that Apex Predator picked the moment to land his attacks. And up next, it's Matsuyama for his last fight. And uh, the Chinese team have brought Mo back on. So Wu came in for Mo's second fight, but now it's Mo Ziwei back on. Both athletes being called to the referee uh, just wants to check their uh, equipment set up and it's actually the uh, Chinese athletes jacket that they're testing to make sure it comes up with a colored light that's the silvery jacket I'm going to test that clip to make sure the colored light comes up on the clip just by pressing Matsuyama's foil against it and I think we're going to have a change of jacket here Susan Wong asking for the jacket to be changed and uh, Mo Ziwei will have to unplug. Perhaps a, a good opportunity for the Chinese to take this little break because the momentum very much is with uh, Japan and Matsuyama. And with Mo on the piece, it's China who need to arrest that momentum. There's going to be a few disappointed faces in that crowd because uh, everyone was expecting Italy to be here. And to be fair, I think probably at the beginning of the day, everyone was expecting it to be an Italy-USA final. Top two teams in the world. But, uh, Hong Kong had their say in stopping that from happening, beating uh, Italy in the quarterfinals and then the USA in the bronze medal playoff. Hong Kong. So, change of jacket for Mosey Wei. Ah, 
Well, beautiful power pass there. Chinese will drink that up all day like a fine cabernet. Well, surrendering the weapon there, uh, as you can see, it is in two. Snapped, does happen. Yeah, the attack coming from the right there, Mosey Wei just faster out of the blocks. We're closing the gap bit by bit, Mosey Way. Well, Owen Lepeshu there uh, with the uh, sleeveless t-shirt, like he's on Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach, in fact, is where the next uh, Veterans World Championships is, the next World Championships in fencing in Daytona Beach, where it'll be Jeff Bukantz on the commentary. Another change of weapons here. That's Yamakuisuki trying to close this one out. Can China get one no? Attack fails, but uh, the continuation on the retreat off target from Matsuyama. Ah, 
Oh, now, was that enough to deem a card for Matsuyama? He's already on a yellow, and the referee going to have a look at the video just to check this one. Worth doing, because a card will mean one more point for uh, Mo from China. Kathleen Varga there, the assistant referee with uh, the switching of weapons. Attack fails there. No distraught as it goes flat, as it's called in fencing. That's when the point doesn't fix on the target, slides across the Lame jacket. There's a little plunger on the end of these weapons, and uh, that's got to be depressed. 500 grams of force needs to be applied. Just pinned to the line there, Matsuyama manages to himself a few meters back there now though Mo pressing Mo pushing ah, parry riposte though absolutely glorious a four riposte or cart riposte across the body like a windscreen wiper watch this action here cart riposte and he leaves his hand and inverts his wrist the left hand up to score the point one away from the target score of 40 in this penultimate leg. And Japan are on the brink here. Still off target from the right, that one. It's a tight match here in terms of the fencing itself. But the scoreline has opened up. And there's more left in this eighth fight, the next to last fight in this men's team foil world championship title match. The last of the fencing action here after six days of live coverage from Milan. And uh, the fencers decide to leave it at that. That's the sort of uh, sign that we're not gonna continue anymore. We need to beat the blaze to show that we're still fencing, uh, but obviously they're not. Everybody knows that. They just let the time kill off. And uh, probably a better decision for China, that one, to do that. 4-4 four, four in the end, that match. So Mo finishes with a plus five indicator as it's Shikine Takahiro going up against Chen Haiwei. Now, the reason why it's better for China that they've not got to the target score of 40 in the eighth leg is that it means that Japan have to score one more point to get to the finishing line. So there's a bit more room, if you like, for China. And uh, straight out of the blocks, Shikine Takahiro going on the attack. And he knows that Chen Haiwei is going to come after him. China have no choice. So... Japan's form of defense is an attacking one. And a video review indicated by uh, Erwan Le Pichu. We get 
Let's see what the uh, uh, the uh, referees are looking at. Does Shakina go looking for the blade at the end of the attack? The referee for Jane. He did change it. On guard. Three. A weapon being checked here. Chikine thought that he'd hit. Attack left. Well, called simultaneous and uh, the uh, Coaching staff for Japan, the French coaching staff for Japan, calling for a video review. The athlete has to actually call it. And uh, no hit given. Men's World Foil title has been the realm of the European nations. Cuba took it in 1991 and 1995. China in 2010-2011, but otherwise, the rest of the gold medalists apart from the heartland of fencing, you have to say. It's the heart, still the heartland of fencing, but fencing is a much more global sport now, as is being shown right here with Japan versus China, two Asian nations in the men's team for a final. Hong Kong have already secured the bronze medal, so there will be no European teams on the podium a little bit later on this evening. Are we seeing a changing of the order? And are we gonna see the bullet train from Tokyo? This men's team foil competition take Japan's first ever men's team foil world championship gold medal. Shikine harking from Nexus Club in uh, Tokyo. I'm sure they'll all be watching right now. Two away for Japan from making history. One away from Japan making history in the men's team foil competition at the Fencing World Championships. First held in Paris in 1921. 14 unofficial World Championships. This is the 69th official championships. And it's coming to its close, and it has come to its close with history being made on day six here in Milan, Japan claiming the final hit in this men's team foil competition and claiming their first ever world title. Erwan Lepeshu stepping up to congratulate Shikine and teammates. And in the end, they broke away in the final three. And Shikine, Matsuyama and Iimura take the gold medal in the men's team foil at the 2023 Fencing World Championships.